Well, good morning. Today it's January the 24th on a Sunday. I um, don't know what the weather is like out of your windows at the moment. Great day though. Now I do know that there is somebody who has a birthday this weekend because I just have met them. Uh, I wonder if anybody else has a birthday. If you're having a birthday this weekend or if you've had a birthday throughout January, happy birthday to you. And I hope you have a wonderful time celebrating yourself throughout the whole of this year. Can't have a party yet, so you can be planning for your party when we're out and about later in the year, we hope, don't we? If you're not feeling very well or you've not been well, well, I'm really sorry. And we will pray for you. Hope you get better really quickly. Anything else? Any great plans for this week? Goodness knows. I don't know. Anyway, it's Discoveries Online, so let's get going. Well, today we're thinking about journeys, uh, and we're going to start off with a game, okay, as we usually do. Now, I'll explain this game to you. You may have played it hundreds of times. You may have never played it before. It's Flip the Kipper. It's a bit of a journey from we're going to do one end of the table to the other, but you will probably do in your house across the floor somewhere. Now, it works best if you don't do it on a carpet, but it's fun to try it on whatever you want. What you need is you need a newspaper. Now we don't get paper newspapers anymore. We have ours online. But fortunately, just before Christmas, I bought a copy of the Financial Times. Not for me, I hasten to add. And the other one we're going to use is actually, um, it's a big issue. It's sort of newspapery type paper. That's the sort of paper you need. Doesn't work so well with a magazine, but a comic might be really good. And then you need to cut out enough fishes, just one piece of light paper, enough fishes for everybody who's taken part in this race. Okay, so Bill and I are going to have a race. We're going to see who can flip the ki kipper quickest from one end of the table to the other. And you're not allowed to touch the kipper. You have to do it just with movement of some sort or other. On your marks, get set, go! <coughs> Yay! I won it! Brilliant! I hope you have a great time. I hope, like me, you'll be the winner. If you're not the winner, doesn't matter. Losing is okay. What we mustn't be is bad losers. Now, we all know about that now, don't we? We're not going to be bad losers. Okay, as I said today, we're thinking about journeys, and you might think this is really strange, but we're going to do the final part of the Christmas story today. Christmas? Surely not Christmas. It's not even a month since Christmas, you know. Okay, so we're going to do the final bit. Now, if you had a Bible, I've lost mine now, put it somewhere, but it doesn't matter, you could read about this in Matthew chapter 2, I think, but have a good look and see what it is. So last time we talked, we thought about uh, the wise men, the Magi, coming to visit the baby Jesus, who we thought by that stage was probably just under two years old, a toddler. Okay, so the Magi, they came on their journey, they'd been to see King Herod, who was really angry at the thought of a new baby king being born, remember that? So the Magi went off back to their homes in Persia, not going back to see the king, not telling the king where the baby was. Now, the king was, remember, a very angry king. And we know what it feels like to be angry, but you have never been as angry as he was. He was a nasty, angry man. And he was so worried that a baby king was going to be born and would become king instead of him, that he made this terrible order that all baby boys under the age of two, two had to be killed. Now he didn't know that Jesus was living in Bethlehem at that time. But God knew what was in Herod's mind and knew where Jesus was living. So one night as they slept, Joseph had a dream, and in his dream, God said to him, take your family and go to Egypt to get into a place of safety. And that's what they did, trundled off to Egypt. Now, can you imagine taking a 
their nearly two-year-old on that long journey. But they did it. They got all the way to Egypt and wonderfully Egypt welcomed them, accepted them and they lived there for quite a while. Until several years later, one night Joseph had a dream. This time God said to him in his dream, it's safe now for you to go back into your own country. So take your family back to Israel. Back they never think up again. Off they go again, trundling back towards Israel. Joseph has another dream. Don't go near the new Herod. He's not a good man. Go around a different route and go to Nazareth. And so the family ended up back in Nazareth, where Joseph and Mary had come from first of all. That's an incredible story, isn't it? Three important dreams. What can we learn for ourselves about this story that happened so many thousands of years ago? I wonder what you think you can learn from that. Do you know Joseph was somebody we don't hear much about in the Bible, apart from the fact that he was there when Jesus was born, and up until they went back to Nazareth, and he was with a carpenter in Nazareth, we hear about that. But he's not sort of heralded as the most important person. And yet, God spoke to him through three dreams. And God speaks to us in all sorts of different ways. It may be that you have a, a gut feeling. I think it would be really helpful if I to lay the table. Now that might be God saying to you, hey, couldn't you help out? All sorts of different ways that God can speak to us. Also, we need to be able to accept things that change, that we might plan, we might think this is what's going to happen, and then that's going to happen, that's how I want it to be. But things can change, and that can be all right, and we can trust that God will help us with the changes. Now I know that some of you have moved house recently and maybe you're still feeling a bit unsettled or maybe you're in a new school and you're a little bit uncertain about that, especially in lockdown when you're not seeing those new people anyway. God can help us through that, those difficult times that we're in. And maybe it is that you are actually feeling I don't like lockdown. I really want to be with my friends. Well, I think life must have been very hard for Joseph and Mary, not in their own country, not with their own family. But we know from the story that God was clearly with them, with them because he helped them when it's time to return. So God does speak to us in all sorts of different ways and we know that he'll be with us whatever the plan is and however much it changes. So that's a great story to remember. And the activities we're going to do are all around some sort of journeys or other. Okay, so the first thing that you could do, I've tried to think of things that you can do inside and outside because the weather changes. You can do it today or during the week. Um, it doesn't really matter when you do it. The first thing, which I always love, I love planning these, treasure hunt. So you could have start a treasure hunt for the family and it might be outside this one. And I usually write down a list of clues and then I copy them out because I know I'll forget them if I don't. And then I take the clues and hide them in the different places. So I might start a clue with something like, shall we have eggs for breakfast? Because you see, with that clue, somebody might think, aha, she means the chickens laying eggs and run off to the chicken house to see if there's a clue there. But somebody else might think, oh, she means the eggs in the cupboard and go off and look there. It's quite good to do clues that make people think and they're not going to get it right immediately. It takes longer to do the treasure hunt and it intrigues it more, doesn't it? OK, so that's something you could do outside. You could do it inside, but far better outside because you can run around everywhere. The second game, now this is one I used to play with, with my grandchildren and I will probably play it again when we get to see them again. And this comes from um, a television pro program 
which was all about pirates. I can't remember what side it's on, okay. So I have drawn a map of the upstairs. These are the stairs going upstairs. And on the map, I have stuck different coloured and different shaped jewels. You may be already remembering this game, okay? Um, swashbucklers, I think it was called. So what I've done beforehand is in these different rooms, in this sort of area in the room, I have hidden, or will have hidden, the matching jewel that goes with it. So what the other people who you've set this all up for have to do is they have to run all over the house. They choose which colour they're going for first. So they come and see it. Okay, I'm going to go for that green one there. So they run up to that room and they look everywhere, look everywhere, look everywhere. And when they find it, they have to bring it back down to you and show you they've got it. Then they can have a look at the map again and say, okay, this time I'm going to go and find, oh, I'll go and find that little pink one. And they race off to try and find it. And they have to bring that little pink one back to you. Ooh, just happened to have found it there. And then they go off and find another one. And they used to love that game. It's great fun planning it out. And then it's great fun doing it. And you know, sometimes they've not found one. And then a couple of months later when I've been cleaning, I thought, oh, that's where it was. They never found it. So that's another lovely game that you can play. And a third thing that you can do that's outside is you can do an interesting walk. Everybody's been out walking, haven't they, at the moment? So make sure it's somewhere safe where you're allowed to go to set it up. And you could take something like a ribbon, or you might do it with particular coloured leaves. You have to think about what is it you're going to have as your markers. I don't suggest that you do like babies in the wood and use breadcrumbs, because those might be eaten up before they get there. But you can make it an interesting walk by taking people on a route to look at some interesting things. Now, you might not think snowdrops are interesting, but I think they're very beautiful. So I would probably take my walkers on a walk where they would go past snowdrops. And you can make it even more interesting by saying, take a notebook with you and write down what you saw. And then you can compare and see, did you see the same things as I thought was interesting? Okay. Three activities to get you busy with this week. Two outside, one inside, and I hope you have lots of fun. And don't forget to flip your kippers as well as a family. Brilliant. So we have thought about journeys that Jesus did with his parents. We thought about things that we can do to have activities together. And now we're going to think about how we might pray for different people. Okay, our five fingers. And I'm going to go through this quite quickly because I expect you're getting a bit fed up with sitting listening and you're itching to get out there and do something fun like one of those activities. Okay, so the thumb, people nearest you, think about who you're going to pray for there. Next finger, those people who help you. Uh, could be that your grandparents are having um, their vaccinations any time now. So you might want to pray for the people who are doing the vaccinations. Third one is for our leaders. We can thank God for uh, President Joe Biden, and we can pray for our own Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, and all the government. Pray for the Queen as well, the Royal Family. This finger, we pray for people who are unwell, and I, I know several friends of mine who are really not very well at all at the moment, and I would want to pray for them. And some of my friends are having a bit of a tough time, I would want to pray for them. And this last one, of course, it's for ourselves. And there's always something, because you know, God loves us to tell him what it is that we're thinking about, and what it is we'd really like, even if he says, well, no, that's not really the best thing for you, he'd rather hear it, okay? Five fingers, get praying, you can do that every day when you snuggle down in bed at night, when you wake up in the morning, when you're out about any time. Now, we're going to finish off with a song, as we always do. All the song, and there is also going to be a, 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 a sort of a journeys activity that your, your parents can print out for you as well when we send it the letter. This song was written as a protest song in South Africa. Now, many years ago now, 
it is many years ago I suppose, there was a time called apartheid. The black people who lived in Africa, in South Africa, were treated really badly. They weren't treated as human humans equal to white people. And there were protests about this, protests by black and white people saying, this is unjust, this is unfair, things have to change. And often when we have protests, and your parents may have been on some protest marches, you sing as you walk along to encourage you, to, to give you the energy to keep going, to keep protesting until justice is done. Okay, so you may well know this one. Um, it's a fairly catchy tune. We're marching in the light of God. So we'll get going and we'll do some marching. We are marching in the light of God. to that. Hmm, I wonder what day is February the 14th? Which saint do they celebrate on that day? Now there's a question for you. Okay, see you then. Bye!